hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we will be starting level 2, and we'll be starting that with logic gates. Now, logic gates, I cannot stress enough just how important these things are. Logic gates are the basis of every redstone circuit in existence. If you take even some insanely advanced and complicated redstone circuits out there, just go and look at them, and th you will see logic gates absolutely everywhere, because they're the basis of everything. So needless to say, these things are really, really important to know. So, since this is such a big and important subject, I found a couple of things to sort of categorize things and hopefully make it a little bit easier to take in. Hence these signs with blocks and these weird circuity temple-y things that I've got laid all over the place. So, I'm going to explain the system and how it's going to work, and then I'm going to show you all the logic gates and how they work. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, what is a logic gate? Well, there's two parts to that. There's the logic part, and then there's the gate part. A gate is a device that takes one or more redstone inputs and combines it into a single output. Logic just means it's done in a logical fashion. So, if you put two and two together, a logic gate is a device that takes one or more inputs and combines it into a single output, in a logical fashion. Easy enough, nothing too mind-bending there. The issue is, there's quite a few of them. In fact, there's 18 logic gates. Two of them have a single input and put it into a, a single output, and the rest have two or more inputs and combine them into a single output. And since there are so many of them, I've done a couple of things to sort of categorize them and break them down into a way that's a little bit easier to take in. So first off, even though there's 18 of them, you're really only going to use 7 of them. The rest of them really aren't used that much. So in this video, I'm only going to teach you the 7 that are really actually used. The rest of them really aren't used that much. And to further break it down, I've also categorized them into three categories. The first is a normal, they're just regular logic gates. There's universal logic gates, which I'll explain when I come across them. And theoretical logic gates, which we won't go over in this video, but they're logic gates which aren't really practically used. They're more used in theory and stuff like that. So, that's my system. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each logic gate independently. I'm going to have links to specific logic gates in the description for those of you who just want a certain logic gate. And for each logic gate, I'm going to explain what it does. I'm going to show you two examples of how it can be used. And then I'm going to show you how to build it, or at least one way of building it, because you can build them in many different ways. And that's why I'm going to do this video. So let's start with the simplest gate. So. The first gate is the NOT gate, also known as the inverter, and it has an identification code of U1. And by the way, there is absolutely no reason at all you should need to know the identification code for the logic gates for any reason at all. The only reason I'm having it here is because it, it does exist, they do have identification codes, and I want to be thorough in this guide. So. I'm just leaving it there for people who wanted to know, hey, this is the identification codes for the various logic gates. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering, the U stands for unary, which means it only has one input, as you can see, and the one's just the number that identifies it. So anyways, enough on the identification codes, you do not need to know it at all, you're completely free to just ignore everything I just said about the identification code if you want. And now back to the NOT gate, also known as the inverter. So like I said, it only has one input and it has a single output. And the way this works is it's simply returning the inverse of whatever you put in. So right now, I'm not sending any power into it, so therefore it's giving me power out, as you can see, because that's the inverse of no power. The opposite of not having power is having power. Makes sense. If I send power into it, then I don't get any power out of it, because the opposite of having power is not having power. And there, so you see, it's a very basic gate, very easy to understand, and the reason I'm not showing you the redstone that goes into it is because the important thing about all these gates 
is what they are actually doing, not the redstone device that's doing it, because even if there's this giant device that takes up half the map, as long as it's doing this exact function, taking a single input and giving you the opposite of whatever you put in, it's still a knock gate. And that's why I'm not showing you the redstone just yet. So that's a knock gate, hopefully you understand. And now I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how it's used. But first, I'm going to show you how to build it, because I just realized that none of the examplers are going to make sense if I'm building a device you have, don't recognize, so I'm just going to show you how to build it first. So, the way you build an inverter is you just take some redstone, take a block, place a torch on it. Done. You have an inverter. It's that easy. The reason this works is because of the torch mechanics I talked about in video one, where if you send power into the torch, it turns it off. So the input is going into the torch, and the output's going from the torch. When I send power to the torch, the torch turns off. Therefore, when I'm sending power, I don't have no output. And when I don't have power, I have an output. Very, very simple and easy. So that's all a knock gate is. It's not big, it's not complicated. Well, actually, actually that's one design for a knock gate, because theoretically you can have any design that does that function, but that's the design you're pretty much going to see. That's the design most people use for knock gate. And now for the examples of how it's used. So, example number one. I have my amazing house with a button that opens my door. And you know, sometimes I want to lock my door. So I have this nice lock switch. Flip the switch and it locks the door. Now you can't open it anymore. The problem is, I don't want this to be a switch that locks the door. I want this to be a switch that unlocks the door. So on so right now, this is unlocked, this is locked. That's not what I want. I want it to be the other way around. I want this to be locked and this to be unlocked. So the easiest way to do this is instead of sending the power directly from this lever, I change it around a bit and change it so that the power is coming from the inverse of the lever. And now, if you look, it's doing exactly as I wanted. I've now completely solved my whole issue that I was having just then. And yeah. Example 1 complete. So, I've gone into my house, and I think the lever's gonna close the door, so I flip the lever. Surprise! It's a TNT trap! Wee! <laughs> and of course, that was done using an inverter. What I'd actually done is I'd had the lever here, and had a torch hidden on the side, and that was just rigged up to a bunch of TNT, as you saw. So yeah, so those are a couple ways of using an inverter. And one more example, just for the fun of it. So, I've built this super hyper mega awesome redstone calculator. But, oh no, it's giving me my answer inverted. Well, whatever should I do? Never fear, not gate is here. Put all of them to inverters, all of a sudden, it's now working exactly how I want. What, what do you think of that? <laughs> so yeah, those were a couple of examples of how to use a knot gate, and I could probably go on doing this all day. The knot gate, really, really useful. It's, it's a great logic gate. And yeah, so, hope you understand that now, and on to the next gate. Alright, I hope everyone understands the knot gate and why it's useful, because it's a very important gate. But now we're moving on to talking about the OR gate which has the identification code of B14, for anyone wondering. By the way, in this case, B stands for binary, or two inputs. So the OR gate is a very easy gate to understand, not hard to get your mind around at all. The way this works is you have an output and two inputs, and by default, the output is off. If any of the inputs are on, then the output's on. So that one's on, so the output's on, so this input's on, now the output's on. So yeah, as long as one of the input's on, then the output's on. Not hard to get your mind around at all. The reason it's called the OR gate is because if you think of this as input A and this as input B, if input A is on or input B is on, then the output's on. That's why it's called the OR gate. So hopefully not hard to get your mind around. It's not a very difficult gate. So yeah, let's look at how to build it. Alright, so here's how you build the OR gate. We have two inputs, of course, so input A and input B. And all you have to do to turn this into an OR gate, connect them, and there, OR gate. If one's on, 
then you get an output. If they're both on, you get an output. So yeah, it's an OR gate. Very, very easy. And yeah, that's the most basic design for an OR gate, and it's one you'll be using most often. So as long as you're combining two th things in some fashion, so even if, if I wanted, even this could be considered an OR gate. So yeah, you can have really simple OR gates. You can also have more interesting OR gates, I guess you could say. So for example, let's take our friend the NOT gate from the last one, except this time I'm going to do it like this. So here's my output of the NOT gate. And what I'm going to do is right here I'm going to place a torch. So it's a NOT gate going into a NOT gate. So it's essentially just doing two inversions. And the end result of this is it should just be giving me the same thing I put in. So if I flip this, yeah, it's just mirroring what I put in. And what I can do is I can plug a second input into that block, and it's magic. I now have an OR gate. And if I wanted to, I can even do this for input 2 as well. So there. And the way I can combine them is instead of combining them at the input stage, I just combine the output of these two torches, like this. So yeah, very simple, not hard gate at all, and really, there's no reason you should need to go beyond the first design. In most cases, the ads just you can just go arbitrarily complex with these as you want. I just wanted to show you that it doesn't have to be one design. You can have many, many different designs for these things, as long as performing that function. So yeah, now let's look at how these can be useful. Alright, so I have my friend who thinks he's being clever by having this door here, and only he, or supposedly only he, knows where the lever is. He actually hid it behind this block. You flip the lever, door opens, and yeah. So I'm going to decide to be clever in my own way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dig over to his wire, and what I'm going to do is I am going to have my own lever to open the door. And now, have fun trying to close your door. Because it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Unless you can find my lever, of course. But, hey, who's going to find the lever hidden behind a block? I mean, geez, especially when it's right next to the door. I mean, come on, no one thinks to look there. So, as a bonus example, here's another version of the same thing. I have a button on one door, and lets me open it. I also have a button in another location, which controls the same door. And the reason I can do this is because they're an OR gate. And the cool thing about this is I can place these buttons in any location that I want, and they'll still be able to control the door. And of course, if I wanted them to be able to give me time to get to the door, like say I think this one's a little bit too far to reach, I can just add a repeater. And yeah, and now I... still too slow, but... Eh. Enough repeater can fix that. And yeah. So there. And of course I'll give you another one more example. Alright, so me and my friend have built this amazing invisible castle, and we want to defend it so that no one we don't want can get in. So we've built this amazing TNT cannon for defense. But the problem is, what if one of us sees who's coming and the other one doesn't? What if I'm asleep or something? So what we did was we hooked up two buttons to our TNT cannon, and we used an OR gate to make sure that both of us can fire it at once. So if I think I see someone, I can hit fire, and it's going to work just as well as if he hit fire. And now I can sh launch it to whoever I think is coming. And chances are they're probably dead if they happen to be in that exact spot. And of course my friend could have fired it too if he saw someone, and just to prove it does, even though it's not loaded anymore. But yeah. And I know I'm not really showing the uses in circuits, I'm more of showing the uses by themselves, but they have just as many uses in circuits as they do by themselves, and you're even going to see a couple of them as I talk about other logic gates, because some of the logic gates use NOT gates and OR gates as components in making themselves work, so... Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed the examples, and now we're going to move on to the next gate in the next video, because I'm actually running short on time now, but... In any case, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you've learned. And I'm sorry I can only cover two gates in this video, I sort of had to introduce what I was doing since I have a sort of weird system. But trust me, we're going to get through all 18 of them, and I hope we're going to have fun doing it, because it's, because yeah. So thank you, and I'll see you.